Hello everybody, my name is Born Knight Bear from Mary Science Lab. Today, we're going to just be doing normal geometrical proofs like we did last time. Now we're going to be doing all sorts of things like uh, those in the circumcenter, uh, the altitude, the median, and we're also going to be doing the rectangle, which we forgot to cover last time. So, let's jump in. Wait a second. I didn't look at this before. That means we have to go with the speed of light. All right, so what are we doing? Well, first we're going to be covering how to prove if a line is the altitude of a triangle. So first of all, we have a triangle in three altitudes over here. So how do we prove if uh, something is an altitude in a triangle? Well, it's actually really simple. You just have to find the slope of so calculate the slopes of these two sides. If the slopes are negative reciprocals, remember that if slopes are negative reciprocals, then that means that they are perpendicular lines. We covered this in the last speed video. So now, that's how to find the altitude. What about the median? Well, about the median, this is the midpoint. So we have to find the median by proving that one of the endpoints is the median of a side of the triangle. The other one will obviously be a vertical. So that's how to prove a median. What about a perpendicular bisector? Well, it may seem hard, CSX, so, but if we have line CSX over here, then we can prove that VS is a perpendicular bisector by finding if CSX and VS have slopes that are, say it with me, negative, negative reciprocals, reciprocals, negative reciprocals, then they are perfect, uh, then they are perpendicular, but that's only one word, we need two, so what about the bisector part, well we have to find a VS is bisecting CSX by finding Finding if point F is the midpoint of CSX. So that's how to find if to VS is a perpendicular bisector over here. Now, what about the mid segment? Well, the mid segment is just a line formed by the two of the midpoints of the sides of a triangle and it will always be parallel to the side not included. So the mid segment we can actually find if something in the mid segment just by proving proving that these two are midpoints. And now, finally, we just have to do the circumcenter and the rectangle. So the circumcenter, you don't know, is the point in a triangle where all of the vertexes are equidistant to that point. So, for example, in an equilateral triangle, the circumcenter is the center. And all of these lines, which are from the point or the vertices to our circumcenter, are congruent. So now we can do this by finding if, so we have to find these three, we actually have to find these three distances. Now, these three different, uh, these three distances, if they are equal, then, this is a circumcenter. 
And finally, a rectangle. Now, a rectangle has two ways to be proven. So, you could either find if the diagonals were congruent, find congruency, or you could find if two consecutive sides had a negative uh, reciprocals for slopes and formed a right angle. Uh, okay. So, adjacent sides form right, what? Excuse me? Something wrong with the Y? Oh, never mind. Form right angle. Alright, so now let's get to the problem that we never did in the non-speedy version. That problem. You know what the one I'm talking about. Alright, so how do we solve this problem? Well, because we're doing the speedy version, we're going to put on yellow. Nobody is yellow. Nobody is yellow. Why? Wow. Alright, can I use something else? Alright. So, let's use red. So, if we use red, then um, that means that we have a triangle over here. Sorry, the sentence I said doesn't make much sense. So, anyway, we want to prove if the blue point is circumcentral. Maybe the better wording would be that. Okay, so how do we prove this? Well, remember from what we just taught you, all three distances over here have to be equal in order for this to work. Now we need to use the distance formula, which is y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared, or maybe the other way around if you like the x first. So now we have to use it thrice, three times. So how do we do this? Well, we can, First, look at this isolated individual. So red, blue. So let's call this line RB for red, blue. So now, RB over here, let's work this out. Now, RB, let's, this is a length of one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this, is a length of one, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six by eight. Now, what does that mean? Well, it essentially means the difference between y2 and y1 is eight, and the difference between x2 and x1 is six. Well, now that I think of it, we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem on these. So, but let's see, if we use the Pythagorean theorem, we get 6 squared plus 8 squared, which gives us 36 plus 64, which is root 100, which is 10. Hmm, all right, wait, is it, yeah, it's one, root 100. So, that means this is 10. Now, for the other side, it looks like there's a similar story because this is also 6, and this similarly 8, so this must be 10 as well. But what about the final side? Well, let's count it up. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the blue point must be the circumference center. So, that is the answer to our problem. 
Thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.